Welcome to this tutorial on how to get started with hosting a Minecraft server. I'm going to teach you guys how to install Paper version 1.17, which is pretty dang new, and how to make it compatible with both Bedrock versions of Minecraft as well as Java versions of Minecraft. The best part is, this server is not going to require you to have a Java account if you're running Bedrock. So let's get started. If you guys want to skip the section in which I explain to you what the differences are between Bedrock and Java, as well as what the different versions of Minecraft, Spigot, Paper, Bucket, and Vanilla are, make sure you guys check the time codes down below so you guys can get to the section that you care about. However, I do recommend that if you're not very familiar with how Minecraft works, stick around for the explanations. They shouldn't take too long, but they'll give you a lot of insight and explain to you so that way you guys know what to do. Okay, now let's learn about the different versions of Minecraft. You have Java and you have Bedrock. If you play on console or anything that's not a PC, you're playing Bedrock. Java was like the OG version of Minecraft, so a lot of people who've been playing Minecraft for a while, they have the Java edition. If you don't know what edition you have, chances are you have Bedrock, unless you know you have Java edition. Pretty simple. If you are still confused, make sure you guys log into Minecraft and you can see exactly which version you have. Now let's talk about the different type of servers you can have. You can have vanilla, you can have bucket, you can have spigot, and you can have paper. I know if you're new like me, these terms probably don't mean a lot, but I'm gonna explain to you guys very simply what the differences are. Vanilla is the basic bare bones server that you get from Minecraft, pretty simple. You don't get any plugin support and you get obviously the most up-to-date releases because it's from Minecraft. Now Bucket is built on or forked from vanilla, which means that Bucket takes vanilla and adds some more features, in this case plugins. Then Spigot takes Bucket and is forked from there, so it'll add more features than Bucket has. And Paper builds on Spigot, so it means that it takes Spigot and adds more features. And Paper has an amazing developer community, so I highly recommend that if you guys don't know what to do, just get Paper. Because pa anything that'll run in Bucket will run on Spigot, and anything that'll run on Spigot will run on Paper. And therefore, anything that runs on Bucket will run on Paper. The only difference is Paper, because it's built on the other ones, the updates come a little bit later. So you'll get 1.17 on Vanilla first, then 1.17 on Bucket, then 1.17 on Spigot, and then 1.17 on Paper. So before we get started, the first thing you're going to need is Java 16. Even if you've had Java installed for a while, doesn't matter, I highly recommend that you just go and install Java 16, so that way we know that you have the most up-to-date version of Java. If you don't have Java 16, you cannot install the server and the server just won't run. It's pretty simple. So let's get started. So right now I'm on Oracle's website and we're gonna install Java 16. I've already installed this, but I'm gonna show you guys how to do it as well, so that way you guys know what to do. If this is the first time you're on this website, you'll get a pop-up that says, do you wanna accept the cookies? I just accepted them. And I'm running on Windows, so I'm just gonna download the EXE. I'm gonna click accept, and I'm gonna click download, pretty simple. And then when this is done downloading, I'm just gonna open it and install it. Java's done downloading, and it prompted me to install it with administrative privileges, so we're gonna click yes, and now we're just gonna wait for it to install. I'm just going to click next to all the options because I don't care if it's the defaults or not. The install was actually pretty quick, so we're just going to close it and now we have Java 16. To confirm this, all we're going to do is click the Windows key, type in CMD, and then type in Java. That's pretty much it. You can also do Java dash dash version, and that shows us Java 16.0.1. Pretty simple. Now let's go and type in Minecraft Paper. So we're just gonna go over here. I'm gonna click GitHub, and then we're gonna download this. So we're gonna click on paper, and then we're going to go to the instructions down here, and we're gonna click download. Now you're gonna choose the download that's at the top. Right now it's number 53, and if it's a higher number like 1000 or 100, doesn't matter, you always want the highest version, because that's the version that has been fixed the most and is the most up to date. Pretty simple. So we're gonna click download, and now we get this paper, dot one paper dash one dot seventeen dash fifty three dot jar file the jar file essentially means it's going to be able to be executed by java in the meantime i'm going to open a file explorer window and create a new folder on my desktop called minecraft paper so right here i'm going to make a new folder and we're just going to call it minecraft paper that's all we have to do now at the bottom, I don't know if you guys can see that, it says do you, this file may harm your computer, do you want to keep it anyways? Yes you do, because we know it's paper, we trust this file. And all I'm going to do is click Control X, and I'm going to go back to the desktop, and we're going to click Control V to paste it. Pretty dang simple. Now we're going to delete the version number, and I'm going to explain to you why in just a second. So it's just going to be called paper.jar. Now if we go back to the instructions, we're going to have to run a simple command to use Minecraft. So we're gonna to go to running paper server and then we're gonna get started. And now here there's this command that we need to use to run paper. So we're gonna go over here and we're gonna make a new file, new text document, and we're just gonna call it run 
dot bat, you can leave the dot txt there. Now, if you can't see the dot txt or the dot jar file, that means you don't have file name extensions enabled. So all you're gonna do is click view, details, file name extensions, pretty simple. Now in the run dot bat, all we're gonna do is paste the same command. Now over here where we see the three hashtags, we're just gonna delete it and leave it as paper.jar. And that's why we removed the version number before. Now essentially, if you guys see these two Gs over here, the two G, the two G, that means we're gonna make the server with two gigabytes of RAM. If you guys have less RAM, you're gonna to wanna to turn these to one G. Or if you have a computer that has more RAM that you wanna dedicate this to, you can even go four G. That's what we have our own Unleashed Army Minecraft server running is four G. But for now, I'm okay with just leaving it as the default, but just make sure you guys do have enough RAM. And the way, the simplest way you guys can check is go right click Task Manager. You right click on your navigation bar right here, go to Task Manager, and then in performance, you'll see exactly how much memory you have. I have 32 gigs of memory, so I'm fine. All right, so all we're gonna do is save this, exit, and now we're gonna right click on the run.bat.txt file. We're gonna click rename, and all we're gonna do is just remove the .txt. This changes it from a text file to a batch file, and a batch file is like a program that Windows runs. So we're just gonna double click on run.bat, and it's gonna run our paper server. In the meantime, let's open up a new browser, and all we're gonna do is go to geyser, G-Y-E-S-E-R, Minecraft 1.17. This is the tool we're gonna to use to make the server comply with both Java versions as well as Bedrock versions of Minecraft. So to do this, we're gonna to go to the download button and we're gonna to have to download one of these files. Now, we can see that our Minecraft server started running, but it stopped. We don't see the command prompt anymore. And that's because we have a, we have a couple of files that were generated. The first being this eula.txt. So we wanna double click on it and open it up. Now we wanna to agree to the terms and services. EULA stands for End User License Agreement. This means that, you know how when you click the checkbox when you sign up for an Apple account? It's the exact same concept. All we're doing is essentially changing it from false to true to symbolize the checkbox being clicked. Pretty simple. And as soon as we click true, we click run.bat, and now we have our command prompt again, and it's actually gonna launch the server. We're gonna have to allow access, and it's gonna set up everything for us. Pretty simple. Now, let's go back to Geyser. Now Geyser is going to be the tool that we use to allow Bedrock Edition clients to connect to our server. Pretty simple. And what we're going to do is we're going to get the spigot.jar. Now remember when I told you guys that paper was based on spigot? So that means that anything that runs on spigot will also run on paper. That's why we're downloading this one. If you guys have a bungee cord server, you guys want to use the bungee cord.jar, but we don't have that, so we're just going to use spigot.jar. Now if we go back and check on our server, it does seem to be loaded. And while we're waiting for our spigot.jar file to launch, we can just launch up Minecraft and connect to the server. Now don't forget, we have 1.17, so we're just gonna click play, and we're gonna click multiplayer, and now we're gonna add server, and we'll just call this, we can call it whatever you want, I'm just gonna call it local, because this is the local server we're building, and we're gonna do 127.0.0.1 and this essentially means our local machine. 127.0.0.1 on any machine will be the same machine. So if this computer is my desktop, and I type in 127.0.0.1, that means I'm saying my desktop, pretty simple. And all we're gonna do is click done, and then we can see that our server's online, so we can just click play, and we can join the world. And that's how we verify that the server's working. Now if we go back here, we can see Kyle Unleashed joined the server. Pretty simple, right? And also, just as a side note, guys, if you guys wanna op whichever user, you can do it in this menu right here. Oops, we don't need the slash. There we go, now I'm an operator on the server. Pretty simple, right? Now we need to stop the server because we need to restart it using Geyser. So all we're gonna do is click stop and the server is gonna terminate. Make sure you guys stop the server by clicking stop and not any other method because you guys can corrupt the server. All right, now we're just gonna show this file in File Explorer. We're gonna click Control X again and we're gonna take it back to our desktop. Now I download all my files to my downloads folder and that's probably where you have it, but if you can't find it, just double check where that file was downloaded. And let's go back to Minecraft paper. And now we're gonna go to the plugins directory and all we're gonna do is control V. Pretty simple, that's all we have to do. Now we're gonna go back to the root directory and we're just gonna click run.bat again, double click it. And it's gonna launch up the server. Now let's go back in the plugins directory. And what we're gonna see is we're gonna get a new directory here for geyser spigot. 
Give it some time. It does take a little while, but it'll sh it'll show up pretty soon. And we can also see geyser spigot in our terminal window right here. Now let's go over here, and now we have a config.yaml file. So we're gonna open this with. We can open it with whatever program you want. There's also in. We can just click open with, and we're just gonna open it with text, just because everyone has Notepad installed by default. And now, there are a couple of things we can change. For example, the server name, you can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it test server. And then over here, you can give it the name of your server that you'd like to be. So you can just say IP for test server. And then we're just gonna call this again, test server. You can change these to whatever you want. You can be my awesome gaming server, my awesome Minecraft server, my awesome Minecraft server, it doesn't matter what you want. It can be anything you want. This will just tell people, especially those who are using Bedrock versions, which server they're connecting to. Super simple. All right, now that we have Geyser launched, that's all we had to do. And we can also connect back to the server just to make sure. I don't have a Bedrock client. Okay, well, I'm still on fire. How did I get on fire? Oh, there, I spawned right next to lava. What is this? If you guys are setting up the server in your home and you're inviting your friends to play over while they're over, all you're gonna do is you're gonna get them to connect to the IP address of your machine and use this port 19132. Now we can do that locally. So if you do have a bedrock version of Minecraft, you can do it and do that 127.0.0.1 like we showed you earlier and use port 19132. Or if you want, you can do what's called port forwarding. So what that means is I'm gonna type in CMD and we're gonna type in IP, IP config. Now what ipconfig does is it shows you the IP address that you're using inside your home network. So inside your router, this is how your router finds you. It knows that 10.1 is my desktop, for example. And that's how it's gonna find you. So if you're at home and you just want your brothers and sisters and parents to play with you or your friends who are coming over to play with you, that's all you need to do. Just give them this IP address that you found with ipconfig. Make sure the IP address is at most three numbers, usually 192, then 168. And then for me, it's 10.1. It can be three numbers, two numbers, or one number. It cannot be letters or numbers. We don't wanna use this IPv6 address. It has to be the IPv4 address, pretty simple. Now you can give this address to your friends and use port 19132 if they're over. Or if you wanna share this with your friends outside in you know the real world, what you're gonna to have to do, so you're gonna type in my IP address in Google and that's gonna show you your IP address. Now, obviously I'm not gonna show this to you because it'll show you exactly where I live because it has my longitude and latitude coordinates, so you guys don't get to see that. However, that's how you find out what your IP address is. Now, once you know what your IP address is and you know what port to go to, how do you actually get your friends to connect? Because right now if you type in the IP address, you won't actually get connected. So what you're gonna have to do is actually connect to your router. So you can do this by either calling your ISP if it's your internet service provider router, or if you have a third party router, you can ask your parents how they set it up, or if you set it up, you can also do it that way. For most people though, it's 192.168.1.1. This is my router's website where I can set everything up. Now for me, I'm just gonna log in here. So now we go under advanced, then we go under NAT forwarding, then port forwarding, and then we can see an IP address. Now, as you guys can see, it's 192.168, which means it's a machine locally. And then we're port forwarding that port 19132 that we saw in this config file. And we also have this one. Now, this 25565 is what's required for the Java Edition clients. So now, we have support for Bedrock Edition clients, and we have support for Java Edition clients. So you guys, make sure you guys need to set this up. For me, if I was to do it, all I would do is I would type in the name. So this would be Minecraft, let's call it Java, the IP address that we had before. So that'll be 192.168.1.248. And then the external port, which will be 19132. And then the internal port, which will again be 19132. It's the exact same. But make sure you guys have both these ports forwarded. You need one for 19132, and then you need one for 25565. And as I said before, this one is for Java Edition clients, this one's for Bedrock Edition clients. So that's pretty simple. Once you set up port forwarding, now people can connect from outside your house into your Minecraft server. Now that we have Geyser set up and our paper server set up, you might notice there's one problem. If your friends are running Bedrock Edition Minecraft, they'll be asked to log in with a Java Edition account. Now that's kind of stupid, right? Why would we want our friends to make a Java Edition account when they don't need to have a Java Edition client or use a Java Edition account when they don't have a Java Edition client, right? Kind of dumb. So there is a way for us to get around this. We're gonna go back to Geyser, the website, geysermc.org. 
And now you see there's a download here for what's called Floodgate. Floodgate is essentially a service or a plugin that we can install onto our Minecraft server that'll allow people who use Bedrock Edition to connect with their Microsoft accounts and not create a brand new Java account. Now this is also pretty simple to do. All we're gonna have to do is just go to the Floodgate page in the Geyser Wiki and we click download. And now we're gonna download Floodgate again for Spigot. Because remember, Spigot works on paper as well. And now we've downloaded Floodgate. We're gonna keep this file again. And now we're gonna open up our downloads. We're gonna click refresh because it hasn't refreshed yet. And we're gonna click Control X on Floodgate. Then we're gonna go back to our desktop and we're gonna go in Minecraft Paper, Plugins, and we're gonna click Control V. So now we have Floodgate in the plugin folder as well. Okay, so the last thing that we need to do to set up Floodgate is we need to go back in our geyser directory in Plugins and we're gonna open up the config.yaml file again. We're gonna click Control and F to get this dialog to pop up and we're gonna type in auth type. As we can see, auth type says online and this is how people who use Bedrock will connect. They'll have to log in online into their Java accounts. We don't need this anymore. So we're just gonna turn onlight into floodgate. Now what this is gonna do is allow people who use Bedrock versions of Minecraft connect with Java versions of Minecraft and they don't need to use any extra accounts. So it's just that simple. We're gonna click Control S to save and then we're just gonna launch up Minecraft one more time. Run.bat, double click, Minecraft is launching, and that's all we have to do to allow our friends on Bedrock to connect with our friends on Java. I hope you guys found this video informative and educational and helped you out a little bit to play with all your friends, not just the ones that have the same client as you. Now, if you guys did like this video, make sure you guys smash the like button, subscribe with bell notifications turned on, and leave a comment if you guys found this helpful. Those things do help out the video a lot, and we would love to share this with everyone else so we can help them out too. If you guys have a suggestion for a future video, or you guys want to see me build something in Minecraft, make sure you guys leave a comment down below. I always respond to the comments very, very quickly. Follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash I stream every Sunday. And lastly, guys, don't forget to join our Discord server. Links in the description below. We have our own Minecraft server that you can get access to there, and it's an amazing community full of wonderful people, and we'd love to see you join us. You can always find friends to play on this Discord server. Anyway guys, that's it. Again, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe, with the notifications turn on, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Whoosh.